Leah, can you see the screen? This is Joan Conover. This is SSCA. We'll start at 7 p.m. And we will have um, about 40 minutes of slides that go over SSB radio communications, offshore use of your SSB, and how to work your rig. This is also being streamed live to YouTube. And SSCA members are on the Zoom part of the presentation, and we have uh, an audience on YouTube. This is SSCA's single sideband radio communications. We'll be talking offshore and nearshore use of your single sideband radio 
things that you need to think about setting up your single sideband. And this will be about 45 minutes. Then SSCA members who are logged on and registered are allowed to ask questions. Um, we are also live streaming this to YouTube. And that is for the general public if they would like to use their single sideband if they have one or figure out what it is or what re is required for the use of single sideband. We'll start at, at precisely seven o'clock. Good evening. This is Joan Conover, and I will be, be presenting Single Sideband today. I am actually a ham radio operator. I've had my license for over 25 years, and um, I have a general license, not an extra, but it does allow me to do free emails using my Pactor modem. I am not going to go into heavy depth on Pactor modems or emails, but I will do some demonstrations of what you can expect to receive. Uh, via SSB at the end of this presentation during questions at the end. Our boat is Growl Tiger. I have two rigs. I have a 710 and a 700 Pro, both ICOMs. I work with 802s, 803s, and some other flavors of radios. I'm president of SSCA Cruising Association. This is my second year as president for my term. This presentation is provided as an informal guidance. Um, it's advisory. Any and all communications, your ship operations, and your navigation decisions are the responsibility of your ship's captain. Going offshore has complicated processes and procedures, which the vessel captain is responsible for. And what I'm going to talk to you on this presentation is from personal experience with thousands of miles of offshore sailing, 
across the Atlantic, down to the South America, and around. And again, I am a ham or high HF radio operator. Some thoughts to start with. Some of you have new equipment. Some of you have new to you rigs on new to you boats. Think of it. You don't have a 15-year-old cell phone. So some of the cables and wires attached to those radios, replace them. That white cable that goes on the back from usually in your back stay, unless you have a Shakespeare, which is that stick that goes up for an antenna. But if you have a GTO 15, the white cable attached to your, and as an antenna feed to your tuner, replace that GTO 15 once in a while. Um, you don't have 15 year old cell phones. Probably most of you don't have 15 year old uh, TVs. Get new GTO 15 cable at a minimum for your radio. It's easy to install and I can walk you through that. Um, I've helped boats constantly over the past years leaving from um, USA and heading to the island. Dragonfly in 2019 thanked for getting uh, her online with a single sideband. She could hear other voices. And that makes you feel safer sometimes to hear other people or ask questions when you can talk at a conference situation, which is what single sideband offers. Single sideband, I'm going to talk about your rig, a little bit about it. And other topics that I don't cover in this one, but I cover in a following webinar that is also complimentary or streaming on, on YouTube. Uh, search and rescue. Sidel, saddle, your satellite aided tracking, which is called SARSAT. That's your EPIRB. That's your personal locator beacons. There's also your automatic information system, that's AIS. That's radio line of sight, your VHF, with digital select calling, which is a very important feature to have. I also don't cover your satellite locators. Now, single sideband radio is SSB. High frequency radio is HF. It really means you have an HF radio, but some of your settings are for SSB or single sideband. Some of your resources. And I would seriously go to Dockside Radio, Gary, for free manual and written instruction view part. I'm going to talk over a little bit about radio facts from NOAA and NOAA FTP mail later in the presentation. At the end, I will show you where this, this material is. NOAA actually, if you send an email, a formatted email to you to, to them, they will actually send back text, your weather text for the name of the file that you've asked for. But you have to know the name. WeatherFax is a product that you can put on your laptop or whatever, and you can actually just use your speaker on your radio to download this over the air. It is slow, but there's several applications out there I use JVCOM32 and Air, Airmail for hand. There's other apps out there to collect online signals from your single sideband. There's offshore S single sideband email, commercial, sale mail, or if you're a ham, it's Winlink. If you're interested in offshore email via your SSB, go to salemail.com and read the instructions that they have. Now I'm going to have should already have sent to you if you're SSCA members the local nets for frequencies for the USA and Caribbean. If not, um, I would ask that you email president at ssca.org and ask for those files and I will send them to you. The key areas for frequencies, you have to know the time that someone's going to be on the call, and you have to know the frequency. It's kind of like um, calling somebody's number. If you call them when they're not home, they're not there. On your radio, you actually have a, almost a frequencies on your radio. It has the names of those frequencies. Every radio can have a different setup. They start off initially the same, but then people modify them, change them. And so you really have to go through one-on-one, -on -one, and it's up to you on your boat to go and check and see where the frequencies are that you want to use and use a list to figure out what time you'll be listening or speaking on those frequencies. For example, on the East Coast, the Cruzheimer's net is on 8152 upper sideband. They're on at 8.30 in the morning, 
and a, on the same channel frequency, the do.net is at 5 p.m. Eastern. There are some rules and discussions of how you um, address in it, and I will cover that a little bit later. Um, but if you do make arrangements to check in with the net at a certain time and date, be sure you do that, or at least give them a reason why you haven't. Otherwise, people do a lot of things to try to figure out what happened. So let's talk about registration. All of these devices, single sideband, EPIRB, your VHF, your AIS, require registration. And they must be registered um, with an MMSI number. And you do that um, um, through either getting an MMSI number through the US government, or you can get a free one for Boat US. However, the Boat US MMSI number, that's Marine Vessel uh, Identifier, the Boat US is not leaving inside the US. So you have to get one that comes from the US government. Boat Communications Operator's License regist is registered with your, our government. You get one license for the boat. It covers all of these devices. They all use the identical same MMSI number as their identifier. If you have a new to you boat or a new boat or rental, you have to have your MMSI number devices and re-register with your correct information. If you rent a boat or charter a boat and they have these devices that send out messages for help, ask your charter company how that's responded to. Because if a, an alert goes out to the US Coast Guard or to Naval authorities or Coast Guard, that MS, MMSI number tells them where to go look for. So be sure you check that out with your charter if you're chartering. But if you have a new to you boat, make sure that the MMSI number for all those devices is transferred to you. And you can do that online. And again, all devices share the same number. The reason I bring this up is because your radio has it too. Your single sideband has that. Your AIS has it. So your radios have that same number. Just be sure you know what it is and it's in there correctly. And I'm gonna look, talk over your rig. And if you have any questions, you can raise your hand or I've allowed you to speak. So um, any of Laura, I think it's Laura and I think it's Sarah, um, you're chime in. First of all, we have an antenna. That's your backstay or your whip. Then you have the antenna tuner. That's usually kind of a, a gray box. It may have AT140 on it. It's got the cable that comes from your backstay, that white GTO that's fastened to the backstay of the boat goes to that tuner. That tuner then has coax cables that goes to your radio. And it also has a cable for the ship for the ground, the copper ground cable for your boat. That's a very important piece of equipment. I'll show you a picture in a moment of all this together. You also have your radio with a microphone and a speaker. And then of course you have your connection to your cable, like the GTO 15 is shielded. And then this ground, this copper cable that comes from the from the tune, that's called your ground. It's also called counterpoise. It's a very important piece of material for you to be able to get long distance out of your radio. Now let's talk. I said I'd show you a picture. Here you go. This is for a sailboat with a backstay. If you are a um, multi-hill, you probably do not have the same configuration. You have a white stick that goes up, and those are called Shakespeare's. But the but the connection from the Shakespeare or the backstay antenna is the same to the tuner. It goes to a tuner, and the rest of the pieces are the same. I'm going to go from the top of the sail down. I'm going to work on talk about first your back bay antenna, and then go down the down the um, the rig. But you'll see on the back stay, you'll see uh, insulators, a big kind of uh, they look like round cylinders at the top and the foot of your stainless antenna rigging. Usually, um, your antenna, the white GTL material. Um, is attached to that antenna, and I'll show you the connections pretty soon. But it's connected from there, and then it it goes. You can see the GTO 15. I'm, it's in the middle of the diagram on your left side where it says GTO 15. 
you see the insulators, you can have standoffs. That GTO 15 goes above that one insulator between the second insulator at the top, fastens on bare wire to bare wire, and then it comes straight down and it just connects right into your AT tuner, which is usually at the rear of your boat in a locker. Hopefully not in the water. Then that AT tuner has cables, and you'll see the blue cables coming through and going to the radio. Those are coax, and you'll have control cables or a control cable that goes to the radio, and the tuner sends a signal to the radio. The radio will send signals back to the tuner, and by pushing buttons on the radio, you will make the tuner go to the frequency you need to hear someone on the air at that particular frequency. Now at the very bottom, we have this kind of, what well, looks like copper, and it is, that's the idea, it is copper. It is your ground. It is not ship's ground. You do not have something stuck to your engine or battery or fuel tank. This is a strip of copper that usually either can be in the, in the hole sometimes, it can be to a plate outside the boat, but it is totally separate from your ship's ground attached to your engine and stuff. And it's called counterpoise as well. Now your radio, to power your radio, it goes to ship's battery. And a lot of times the power for the tuner will come through the control cable from the radio. Sometimes they do it separately, but basically your power comes from your ship's battery. And that's also how both your ra radio and the other devices are, that are attached to your entire radio system get their ship's ground. That comes to the battery. That's the DC ground that you get. Now, also on the bottom of this uh, diagram, you will see something and it comes along and says twin lead radials. That is a way to describe um, counterpoise. That's a way of laying out. Um, ways of long strips of copper, or you can have something called a KISS system, which is these long, uh, certain size lengths of copper to uh, allow you to pick up signals on those frequencies at certain distance. Your batteries do need to be in good condition and plus up. Radios take battery power. If you don't have good batteries, you'll have a very weak signal. By good batteries, I mean batteries that are charged. If they're bad batteries, you, you replace those, or you should. But you need to have good charge on your batteries to get good signals. Let's talk hardware. You've got a single sideband radio. It has that in the center. You can see the ACOM AT. This is the 140, I believe. And that's a gray box. It should not be in the water. In your, and sometimes they have them in the back of the boat. One of the big problems is you get water into that uh Lazarette and your ICOM tuner gets wet. That's not good. So consider that. But your radio has a face plate, buttons to control, tuning knobs. One does um, goes uh, by group. One goes one by one. You can see right here on the front panel, you'll see information across the top that tells you what you're doing. Where it says ICOM-M802, that is the um, name of that channel. It's a word or a name that's been given to it. And this is sitting at channel 160. Uh, that's a storage location. Or think of that as the uh, phone, almost the name for the phone number. If I was to push a certain button on this panel here, that will flip me from seeing the English type letters and whatnot that explain the name and place that this item is stored on my radio to the phone number or call it the frequency, which is what it is, that you are transmitting on. So don't be confused if the panel looks like this. Over at this side, you will have something that says frequency and channel. And you press that button, it will make this chain. At the very bottom, I have a single sideband Hector modem connected to the radio correctly with cables and to your laptop it will allow you to receive email from an email service through single sideband. It's not fast, but you can get your emails, text emails easily. There's no way to get the internet 
with any sort of device right now that's reasonably priced on a sailboat. So I've talked a bit about the radio, the tuner. I talked about the Pactor modem. Let's talk coax cable. That's the cable that goes from the tuner here to the radio. You also have the GTO 15 feed line that goes from the antenna to your tuner. You have um, standoff insulators, other parts, you have cable uh, connections, backstay insulators, you have wiring, and you have the ground straps and a ground plate, that is your camouflage. You may have alternate antennas, and for VHF radios, you probably do. You may have an alternate ground. And again, I talked over the Pactor modem. So if you see that little box that says SCS or Pactor modem on it, it means you have the capability to do email. Connections and cables. The area of most problems that I have found over the years are the antenna connection, especially the ones outside. The ones that backstay where you take the cable and get nice clean bare wire on your new cable. You make kind of a J-shaped loop, upside down umbrella loop. And you attach that cable by the wire to wire with a clamp. And I'll show you that in a minute. All of these cables, in a lot of your electronics, you should check and reconnect and test them annually for red, for rust or water. And you also need to make, take care that the electronics that you have on your boat have what are called ferrite chokes on the electric lines because those will affect not only your radio, but everything else you have on the boat if something's blasting out extra power um, into the environment. I want you to make a special check on your antenna for your backstay attachment. Make sure it's clean. And please don't use grease or it has to be wire to wire. So don't put grease or electric tape on it. You need wire to wire. You need to attach it. Then you can wrap your electric tape on it. Do not spray it. Now that ground and counterpoise, that copper, um, that copper foil or that copper ladder or whatever you have is running down usually along the hull of your boat. It may be inside the fiberglass, and it, and it is called counterpoise or ground, but again, it's not the ship's ground, which is the bolt on, usually on the engine block. You also need to check the quality of that foil, because if this is a new to you boat, it's been there for a while. If you see it dusty, green, holes in it, you need to replace that foil. You can buy it at uh, West Marine. You can buy it online. It comes in about a two-inch wide strap and it's flat shiny copper and you just lay that out and you attach it to your tuner at the ground wire spot that they have on the tuner and you look at your documents for that. One of the reasons you have to be careful with these this copper or this counterpoise a lot of people will get ground loops because they attach the case of their radio to the ship's ground somewhere or they attach somewhere else and all of a sudden you've got a loop and then you have either too much interference, no power, you don't get anywhere. And a lot of times that's from the ground. And it's recommended not to ground the radio. The radio case that you see, for the 802, it's a black box. For the 710, it's actually the case itself, but it has a ground point. You don't connect that to your ship's ground. You're actually getting the ship's ground already via DC. Now let's talk about a kiss. Now it's kind of called keep it simple. It's actually just a strap um, and has copper in it and you attach it as counterpoise. I may have a problem, oops. I may have a problem with this particular. It may not say exactly what I, what I want to say, but. This is how you connect your antenna, your GTO 15 to your, um, your antenna's up here. You've got a connector. You're gonna put your cable on here and that goes down below and then that goes to the tuner. And then off the tuner comes your, your counterpoise, your copper or a KISS single side band. And you buy that, they're about $149 and they cover, they work pretty well in most boats. You just have to try it. Sometimes it doesn't work at all on your boat. But in this particular boat, it should work it's working um, correctly, it's working on my boat. And then the, the um, 
cable from the tuner goes to the transceiver or your radio. I put this little bolt here because that's how I want you to fasten that cable up here on your backstay, the GTO clean wire. is to use that bolt. Now, what does the radio look like inside? Now this is a box for an 802. We're looking at Mr. Scott Berg up in Maryland showing Skylark's Tim Stone how to replace a fuse in that radio. It's not recommended to take it apart, but sometimes if you're in a pinch offshore, and I'm just showing this because I want you to know you can do it, and your captain can do it, you can do it, um, there's a fuse inside the 802 box. This is for 802 and 803, I believe. But there is a single fuse and sometimes it blows. And then your radio doesn't work at all. Before you panic, check the fuse. And this is how you do that. Here's your radio. I've taken the black box off. See where it says in the back vents where you're supposed to keep that box uh, good airflow. But that little white case, you can see how things are set up. We've just taken that box off. There's the cables that were on there. And we're going to take this white case and remove it because the fuse is inside there. You don't do this outside. You don't do it in the rain. And right here, whoops. Right here on the left side where that blue arrow is, that's the fuse I'm talking about. And if that fuse is blown, you can replace it put everything back together again, and um, following good you know, electronic, electronic principles, and your radio may work if that's all that's wrong with it. Now the 802 and the 710, we all have a radio chassis ground issue. We do not ground that black box to our ship's ground. You get the ground from your DC electric. The instructions from some of some from ICOM were incorrect for some installations. Connecting it to ship's ground here, a little ground panel on your black box that is really your radio for the 802. That's going to create noise. And you don't want to do that. If you have questions about that, you can email me or we can talk. And I'm perfectly willing to go one on one with you on your rig. When you're on your boat, I can come in with Zoom. You can show me the rig. I can walk you through it and get you on the air. I've done that. It takes about an hour and a half of time. And uh, I usually go over your radio, troubleshoot, check the signals that I can hear, test a few, run a few tests, and then show you how things work using your rig. And I get you to uh, a radio check. Before you leave on your trip, check for bundle cables, especially power cables next to any coax cables. Unbundle them. You do not want power next to any coax, no matter if it's radio or anything else. Sometimes when people make it really beautiful and you look at it and it's got power cables next to other cables, you get interference and that's not a good idea. Again, check and re-secure your external connectors. Download the best current and most current frequency list for radios or other materials and documents. You will not have the internet offshore and it's hard in some of the islands as well. It's just not like it is here. Uh, for example, I pre-programmed Salty Dog Rally and emergency frequencies in their radios when I helped them. I did 38 radio boats this year in October. And I also suggest you post a cheat sheet near your radio that has a schedule frequencies. And I usually do a list that I give to my crew and review the radio protocols. So if something happens to the person who's running radio, you have a backup. You may want to consider noise canceling headsets. And you definitely want to practice. In one rally, I normally have three or four boats two days before they leave suddenly calling and panic because they don't know how to use a radio and they haven't tested it. And so then it's a really a race against time to even get them because they're supposed to be doing other stuff, not worrying about the radio, to get ready to leave on a rally. Now, on the air, single sideband etiquette. First of all, you identify yourself clearly. Um, I think all of us have listened to the VHF radio with uh, some government officials speaking so that you can't really understand what they said. On the air, you're going to speak clearly and slowly. 
And remember, the world can hear. So you don't um, just be careful the language you use. You speak slowly and clearly short sentences. And it goes something along the line of this. I have a boat that's a friend of mine called St. Jude. I know St. Jude is on the frequency that I am also on. So I take my uh, microphone and I hold it up to my mouth. I don't spit in it, but I, then I transmit. And I will push the button down and I will say, St. Jude, St. Jude, this is Growl Tiger. And then I'll wait. And if St. Jude comes back to me, he will do something like Growl Tiger, this is St. Jude. What is your message or something like that? And then we'll start talking normally. But we don't do a lot of us, his, and ands. Short sentences, slow speech, and clearly enunciate. I also suggest you set up a radio log so that you can track when you talk to somebody and who you talk to and on what frequency and if the, it's was clear or not. So date, time, who you talk to, and if clear or not. And sometimes you can determine if you're having periods of time where it's noisy and periods of times when it isn't. You can kind of figure out if it is something to do with the atmospherics, which can affect your, your hearing ability or something on the boat. And I always press the tune button uh, and listen to my tuner to make sure it clicks. Um, if I haven't been using my rig for a while, when you press your microphone button down, that should automatically tune. Tune should come up on your radio. You should see it. It says tune and then drops out. It says it drops out. If it doesn't tune, if your AT140 tuner does not click when you're tuning, and you can have someone listen and you've got something wrong with either the cable or the tuner. Now here at the bottom, you'll see um, US Coast Guard distress, distress and Coast Guard contact frequencies. And those are all, for example, you'll see, um, this is the ship station name. And it's got the time. That station is, is on the air. This is just for um, emergencies that is in the list of information that's on Dockside Radio. He has a list of both the emergency frequencies and also the, uh, well, they're not commercial, but they're the, the nets that everybody sets up. You can set your own net up as long as it's not a dedicated frequency. So you could have your own net on a certain time and place on a certain frequency. Just realize that everybody is first come, first serve. And if you're on the air, you're supposed to respect that person on the air and go to a different frequency. So how can I tell if my radio is working? So you've got a new boat and it does turn on and you can see the faceplate has stuff on it and your tuner is clicking and you probably know the frequencies you need to, to, to use. And you have put those frequencies in the radio and that's what's showing on the screen for you. So, okay, let's do a radio check. Let's try KPK Radio. SFCA has KPK Radio 8104 upper sideband. And that's at um, 1215 UTC, which is universal uh, time, or Cruzheimer's net, or ham radio net can be used if you're ham. An emergency, anyone on the ham radio nets anywhere can be uh, addressed on the radio. But look at the frequency list, look at the time, and make sure that someone will be at that frequency at that time when you want to do a radio check. Check your time. That's one of the basic things that causes the problem. Nets may be on a different time zone, and you miss the broadcast. If you can't hear clearly, most times it's something on your boat running. A lot of times in a marina, there'll be a lot of noise. So start turning things off in your boat. Pumps are really bad. Um, autopilots are bad, um, inverters can be bad. So one at a time, I turn, I turn, turn things off and I check to see if it makes my, if I can hear things easier. It may take a while to figure that out. And if you're transmitting and it turns lights on either in your, uh, your panels 
or your fluorescent lights flicker, it means you have uh, interference and you probably need to track that down or put more chokes with your little clip, clips of ferrites that go around your electric cables. So it prevents um, extraneous noise into the different systems. Now for a radio check, I would go to, for example, St. Jude. I'd say St. Jude, St. Jude, radio check. And St. Jude would come back to me and say, hailing vessel, or they would say, Ralph Tiger, if he knew who I was, I hear you five five. In some cases, they may say, uh, vessel asking for radio check, I hear you five five. Or one five. If I, it was one five, that's really bad. If it's three five, well, it's workable, but three to four, it can be noisy, but five five is perfect. And it also depends on the distance. Usually, um, I like to go uh, not from test someone locally with me, but go to pop down to a uh, rig in Florida, which is KPK, and test on them. Or Chris Parker, he has a radio system set up there, and he may be willing to test for one of his clients. But again, if you have noise and there's a lot of noise, it's interference. It may be from the marina, from the other antennas on, on the marinas or, or things like that. And it's up to you to figure out what, where that's coming from. Once you're transmitting, you'll also get a little another hint, screen information. Across the bottom of the screen, as you're talking, you will see little dashes that go across. I want your dashes when you're talking to go up and down evenly but at least be three or so. When you're not talking, it's better not to have anything showing up there unless someone is transmitting to you and then you may hear something. But normally you don't want sound on, constant sound on showing on the radio at the very bottom. It can flicker a little, but you don't want it steady if you're not talking. Problems underway, again, that RFI interference, turn off pumps, turn off, uh, uh, autopilot, just be sure you tell people you've turned it off. Or the refrigerators are a really big one too. But I always put a little bit of tape. I turned off the refrigerator on my instrument panel so people know my freezer is off, or whatever, if I'm working the radio. I usually come up in the morning, um, usually between 4 and 8 a.m. when I'm offshore, and I download all the materials that I need. I just sit down and do my email, download everything. Um, I have everything ready to go to send out. And I download stuff, send stuff out, get my weather, and then I sit down and do the weather information for the captain when he gets up for coffee or midday or whatever. Um, usually, if you don't hear somebody, you probably got the schedule wrong. No one's there to talk. Propagation is a big thing, and you hear things about sunspots and all that. Well, that affects propagation. I'll show you a little bit about that next. Also, battery strength is important. Transmission strength. SSB radios, as far as I'm concerned, are like rocks. I've seldom seen any broken unless they've gotten a direct lightning strike. And I've had a full lightning strike. It didn't hurt my radio at all. But the cables, the ground, and the tuner are all areas. And the antenna are all places that can have more issues. And I see most of the issues from the cable, from the antenna to the tuner, and the ground. So let's talk propagation. There can be interference based on time of day, based on solar activities. And it may cause you to change the frequencies that you use because some just don't work well. Now, down at the bottom here on the screen, I have a, one of the apps I use is called AirMail, and it allows me to send email to another host station that collects the data from me and puts it on the internet and then collects my email and sends it back. Um, this particular app is AirMail. And it can be downloaded even if you do not have um, ham radio or radio at all because the app just runs on your laptop. But it will have a propagation tool. And I use it by putting in, say, Rock Hill, South Carolina, and my lat long. And it tells me at what time of the day I will get the best transmission from my location to that spot. So, for example, um, Part way down, you'll see San Diego. If I was to click on San Diego and I have my place, my location is up in the screen and it checks San Diego 
to me. It will tell me green the times that I can talk, red when I can't talk. So it'll give me a better idea on the frequencies and the locations that I'm trying to listen to. It's kind of like that, but just a quick test. And uh, it's just a good tool to know that's available. Usually the best frequency is eight megahertz and it's a rock. I don't have to worry about it. The other frequencies, the higher ones, and they can be picky. And then the really low ones don't have much distance, but they're reliable. Now let's talk a bit of GPS because GPS, you may have connected to your radio. Uh, it's part of your um, distress um, digital select calling on your VHF radio, but also if you're distress on your on your 802 radios. GPS is used on almost uh, many of our onboard devices and on some and sat phones. And um, sometimes it's a shared resource on our antennas and stuff. We verify. Um, um, we, we use two di different devices for the VHF antenna. It has nothing to do with a single sideband antenna. It's a totally different antenna. So if you see a, a stick out there that wire is going to your single sideband radio, it's just a little like a VHF radio stick, it probably is. So don't disconnect it. Um, check and make sure that it is not supporting your radio, your single sideband radio. So check your manual for your testing features on your radio, both your single sideband and your VHF. And again, if you send a message or email or a location report, and you've set up a time to send it to someone on shore, your shore coordinators or whatever, try as best you can to meet it or relay to another boat or, or something so people don't think something happened to you and try to find you when you're perfectly fine. And again, propagation, that footprint of how far you can send at any point in time, in the daytime, nighttime, is important for both VHF radio's line of sight single sideband can go around the world. You just have to have the right time, place, and propagation. So questions. Um, I can take you online and I can show you some things with FTP mail and stuff. And I'm going to uh, stop the share here. And I have Laura still on. And Laura, I also, there's Susie Petty is on too. Hi, thank you. This, thank you for, for doing this. This is great. Um, well, yeah, tell me, um, how can I help you? You've got a single sideband radio you're learning. Um, I think I'm going to be working with you one-on-one, -on -one, correct? Uh, well, I didn't, didn't arrange that, but it's, it's great to know that that's an option. Um, so, so here's this. So we have like this portable SSB radio receiver, uh, receiver I guess. And so we can't even... Um, uh, you know, say messages, but we can receive messages. But... A, a yeah, yeah, I've got one too. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and so like, did you come, did you see that it came in handy? Um, uh, we're going to go to the Bahamas. I think we mentioned in your last uh, webinar, the newcomers webinar. Yeah. Uh, am I the only one here? I don't want to. No, uh, Susie's there and she's muted right now. Okay. And I've got, um, we're streaming live, but you're, I've got you um, highlighted. So you've got a receiver and you're going to go to the Bahamas. I would use um, tests on Chris Parker. Where are you located right now? In St. Pete. Uh, St. Pete. We're in Gulfport. Yeah. Okay. Well, do this. Um, use your receiver to listen to Chris Parker okay. in the morning. He transmits on single sideband. It's open transmit. And you sh should be able to hear him on one of his frequencies. Okay. And that should be in the frequency list. Did I send you a frequency list? I, I don't think so, um, but I, I made notes. Maybe like he's like 4035 or something like that. Yeah, 4045 okay. and 8137. Okay. All right. And so that would be like maybe uh, 6.30 in the morning or seven o'clock in the starts, morning? Yeah, it starts about 6.30 and um, I, since I have you in the database, what I'll do is I will send you the frequency list that he has and how his antennas point. 
Okay. Sometimes he points at certain directions and you want to know about the Bahamas. So it'd be good if you knew when he did the Bahamas, so you can listen to see how it sounds. Great. Yeah. You also know when he's pointed for um, the Bahamas. Now, what are you using for communications um, uh, in the Bahamas? Um, so uh, I have my husband, T. We're sitting right next to me. You know, we're still here. So we're going to go in May. So we're still figuring it out. Um, can you turn that <laughs> we're, we're experimenting with the radio right now. Can you turn that off? Yeah. Um, so we, we don't know. I guess we get a SIM card. Maybe we're going to switch our carrier to Spectrum. We have Verizon. Um, is that what you're asking? Yeah. And you've got your VHF radio. Yes. And you're going to try a cell service um, in the Bahamas. I would suggest that you get something called a one SIM card um, and look at the various Bahama Wi-Fi um, systems that are available. Some of them can be kind of expensive, but a one SIM card will let you talk um, on their cell service with a SIM card. And I've used that before. I go in um, to the Bahamas. I use that if I have to talk to customs or check something out and find out where the store is that I need to go get my SIM card from or my new SIM card or my, whatever device I need for the Bahamas. Then I can get through customs, get to where I'm going to be, and then I go wander off and find my stuff. As much as you can, do it ahead of time. May's a couple months away. Um, you have time to ship stuff back and forth from the Bahamas, but you don't have a lot of time. Okay. So get a one SIM. I'd suggest a one SIM card and account so you have a, uh, it's universal. You can even use it in Cuba if you end up in Cuba. Okay. Um, it, it really does. It does. It does make sense. Um, I don't use it that much. Okay. I've got an unlocked cell phone, and that's what I use. You will need an unlocked cell phone for the yeah, Bahamas. Yes, we have. We do have that. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, and then in the I, so we're thinking we're going to use the SSB radio, I guess, for weather reports mainly. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, um, you can get weather reports. You can get news um, on on the radio because you'll be able to pick up. You know, you have shortwave, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, you can pick up some news and some weather. The most important thing is, though, is Chris Parker. Also, if you have a if you have a, a long antenna wire for that little radio. We do. Okay. Be sure you string that up nice and high and practice with it. And you can actually use that JVCOM32 software or any receiving software for weather facts on your re with your receiver. You just use the receiver, plug in your cable to the speaker on the receiver that goes to your port on your laptop. Okay. And the speaker will send the the sounds, the weather fact sounds to your laptop, and the software makes a picture out of it. So let me. So we we connect it because we do have like a USB port on our, on our SSB receiver. So is that what you're saying? And just connect that no, to our. I'm laptop. talking to this. You're going to use your speaker to go in your microphone in on your laptop. Okay. So think of your you got your little radio. You got the sound coming in from somewhere. You put the. Um, speaker connected to the sound in on your laptop and the software you get software that listens to that sound and builds a picture of the image that's coming in with feedback oh wow okay well that sounds uh something it's that kind of fun to play with but you do it ahead of time sure. and you write down notes really good just to it. Cool. And, and what is that software called again there's one called JVCOM32. J is in Joan, V is in Victor, C, Charlie, O, Oscar, M is in Mike, M is in Mike32. Okay. And there may be others. There probably are. Um, is that something you buy on, uh, on, a, on a disc or like a, or, or like a, uh, in a, it's on a... It's an app. You download an app. Yeah, it's an app. Okay. Okay, okay perfect. Um, and it's actually created in Germany. Okay. So it's a, a very well-written piece of software. Well, now, if, you, if you'd like, I can, um, let me go look and see if my, um, I 
exit polls. Come in here. I'm going to go look at. I'm going to go. I'm looking for something here. I'm just, just a second. Trying to get something up here, so um, there we go. I'm going to share the screen here. Okay, thank you. So here's your marine weather broadcast from U.S. Coast Guard. You'll see at the top, it's weather.gov. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Weather.gov Marine U.S. Coast Guard broadcast. It's under the National Weather Service. And what I did was I looked for um, marine weather radio facts, and it brings up this page for me. Okay. Under weather.gov. Okay. Let me just, U.S. Coast Guard. Broadcast. Okay. Now, if you'll see here, it says uh, radio facts, U.S. Coast Guard radio facts. They send it out, and you'll use the probably the Boston transmitter. But they also do uh, voice, and they do um, radio reports. So you can go there to find if they have voice. It will tell you what time and what frequency. When it says HF, it means that means your radio. So I'm going to look at the radio facts here. Okay. And the, when you look at this, it tells you how to look at um, ships, the broadcasting schedules, all the other different people that are doing this. Um, there's a user's guide. And you can actually send an email out and say, help. <laughs> and it will give you instructions back again via email of how to use their radio facts system. Okay. Well, I'll definitely explore that website as well. Yeah, what you what you need to do, you have marine text uh, forecast from a National Weather Service, radio facts charts. And I'm going to go to radio facts charts. And this is a list of where they are. You're going to look at the Northwest Atlantic because that's where you're going to be okay. pretty much. And they have... Um, a, a lot of material. I'm going to just go to a shortened version, a condensed version. And I'm going to go down and look at surface charts. See down here, they're all live links. You do this here, you don't do it offshore. And I'm going to look at these surface charts. Now, what's interesting to me on surface charts, let's go and look at our area. It's by, you know, the longitude. You have 24 hour surface forecast. That's very valuable. You can make an email request asking for this file name through text email, and it will send it back the picture to you. Okay. And that's really important to know because if you're even using things like um, in the Bahamas or something, and you want these pictures, that's a way to get them. You're not using it through your radio, um, you're using it through your email. But you can do that and download these pictures, even if you don't have internet. And I'm going to bring one picture up, 24 hour broadcast. And that's what that picture looks like. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So you're going to be in the Bahamas, right? Yes. This is good. You don't have any wind in the Bahamas right now. <laughs> How's just that. And you probably shouldn't have too much wind here either. Right. St. Pete. But you do see this thing coming through. You do see this thing right here, which means that is an occluded, becoming an occluded front, and you see a little wiggle. I'm getting into weather, but I happen to love these charts. Um, so let's go back just for fun and look at 36 hours. Okay. And that's 500 millibars. Sorry about that. That's okay. If I remember, like you're in New Jersey, is that correct? 
Um, I'm in Hampton. Oh, okay. So like you guys are getting like a blizzard right now or did that? Uh, already we, got 80, we had 85 degrees today. Oh, I see. Okay. It's north of us. The only problem is I'm in the middle of putting a brand new Bimini top, 15 square yards of stem where I've made it to put on top of my cockpit. And I can't have any wind because it's all stitched together and it's like a giant sail. And if I have any wind, I'm trying to put it on this big, um, I have a 51 foot sailboat, trying to put it on my um, um, Bimini frame and I can't have any wind. And we've got, it's nothing but wind. It's breeze <laughs> and it's windy. So, um, but you can see there is a pretty nasty storm. And if I was out, I would not want to be out here. I see. Uh, and the waves coming down here are even worse. Now, I'm going to go down here to the Bahamas. Remember I said that there was something that's going to form there? See that bubble? It is. So okay. right now, you've got weather. But this front is bending down, so that's okay. High pressure still. But you see this little bubble here. So I'm kind of going, hmm, okay. The reason I mention this is because when you download these pictures off the uh, – single side band or your radio, you may not see all this little detail, but you're going to see these little lumps and things like that. And maybe these circles. So if you know where you're at, hopefully, um, you can kind of use that as saying to warn yourself, I get the 24 and the 36 hour. I'm going to go back and look at the 48 hour and see how close it is. I went back to 500 over again, Doug. I happen to like the 500 over. So here we are. This looks pretty much the same. 48 hours. So they didn't update that one. Let me go back and see if we've got the 72 hours. And here again, this doesn't look. It looks like this is lifting out and a low is formed here, which I would expect. I would think I would want to look tomorrow morning and take a good look. And I would suggest you go look tomorrow morning. And see what has happened right in here based on the two charts we just looked at. So you're going to go tomorrow mm -hmm. to the uh, marine charts, the weather facts chart. And you're going to look at the 24 hours, what it's going to be tomorrow. Okay. So look at what changes between today and tomorrow in these two charts, 24 hour and the 36 hour. Okay. Okay, yeah, no, this is great. I will. It's good to start doing this now. Yeah. Yeah. And then what you if I do two weeks before I, well, even a month or so, I know what my weather's kind of like, sticking my head out and look. But yeah. I start at least two weeks before a voyage and I start looking at the patterns because weather is nothing but patterns. And I get a feeling and I go and download the, um, there's a satellite tracking map that, uh, or not satellite, but hurricane tracking map that uh, NOAA puts out for track. It's just a sheet of paper with squares on it, and it has U.S. on it, and you're allowed to can track their reports for hurricanes and put pencil marks on it. Well, I don't have time when I'm listening to something on the radio to make all my pretty pictures. So I got to print out a bunch of these blank sheets with just the U.S. and the lat longs on it. And then when I'm listening, I can make marks on that sheet for that day and kind of a shorthand really quickly. Does that make sense? It, it does, yeah. It does, um, super helpful. And then just, if we can just, if I can go back for a second. Um, sure. Sorry, I, I have allergies, but um, you mentioned the the German software, um, the yes. JVCOM. Like, yes. I'm having trouble finding it. And you said it's an app like JVCOMM32. Yeah, so there it is. Okay. JVCOM DE. Okay. And he also does it in English. So it's uh, JVCOMM.DE. Okay. And you can download it for free and just try it. It just says temporary on the thing, but I would try it. JVCOMM. Yeah. Um, and you can do some pretty nice stuff with this. Here's. Um, I don't know how good you are at German. Um, no, I'm not at all. <laughs> I read it, and I came from Germany before I was to the U.S. when I was five, so I kind of understand it. 
I but see. I'm terrible at reading. Writing is terrible. Uh, oh, but, you know, I see the English uh, on the upper right-hand corner. There's an English right. button. Yeah. And I don't know how long his software is going to be up, but okay. he is uh, a dinner. This is a really nice program. And exactly. you just get the free piece, download it and use it, mm-hmm. play with your receiver. And um, I think you'll find that of interest. Yeah. Also from your, um, now you just have the receiver. You don't have a single side band. So you're just going to listen to uh, people and thinking yes. my way through this. Yeah. But you can connect your speaker and he does have instructions on doing that okay. um, on this site somewhere. Just poke around and look, and you could look for other um, SSB, um, RadioFax um, applications and see what shows up. I'm also going to go back here to this weather page, because up here at the top, they did have, um, here's a, um, some other materials that are interesting. Um, the worldwide weather facts broadcast schedules is kind of nice to have in your back pocket. Um, they've got a user guide for radio faxes, key terms, uh, historical data, which I found useful. I'm going to go to the, um, they did have a video, but I don't see it there. Hmm. So I've gone back here, but um, they're redesigning their pages and some of the stuff is missing. That's okay, but you can see that uh, they talk about radio fax hardware here. Okay. They we'll talk about the companies that have radio fax hardware, but they never talk about the handful that tells them. But yours will work. Okay, great. Yeah, that will take a couple hours just reading that website kind of. Yeah, you've got a lot of learning, but you know, you're going, you're going to be doing baby steps and you can just pretend when you're in the, in the Bahamas, but okay. your reading of radio will be very valuable there for getting weather reports um, and keeping an eye on what's happening with your barometer is also very important. Okay. So anyway, it is um, eight o'clock and Laura, if I can help you, I will send you the, both you and Susie, if I haven't done it already, I will send you the uh, frequency files and information and, um, I am going to share one more thing. I'm going to go to Dockside Radio and show you that site. The dogs are helping. Right? Um, this has all the SSB nets and frequencies. And he keeps that updated. So you're able to go and find all the East Coast nets, which I think are important. And there it gives all the times. And that's what I download and use. But there's Chris Parker's frequencies and the time that he's on. And there's a bunch of these that you can listen to. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. And this is very helpful. Okay. And um, thank you. Hey, Susie, you have a 802, don't you? Yes, I have an 802. Um, do you need, do you want to go one on one and on with your rig or are you using your rig already? Um, our rig, when we purchased our boat, was installed um, in our forward stateroom in probably the most a bad location that you could find on the boat. So we are right now um, in the process of doing, um, moving that radio to our pilot house so it can be better utilized. So um, probably in the next month that will be up and ready to go. Okay, well, um, I will send you a copy of this presentation. I don't know how useful all of that is, but the picture of the antennas and everything else. Are you using a Shakespeare or using a uh, backstay antenna? Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Okay. Yep. Um, the instru- everything's pretty much the same. You really want to have a good counterpoise. And Shakespeare's okay. can be noisy because they're just, uh, remember, they, they can vibrate in the wind. Oh, sure. Yes. That makes noise. 
Um, yes. but they're very effective. And um, it comes down to making sure you don't have interference in, right. in all systems. But if you want to, and you, you can contact me at presentssca.org. We have other mentors, but okay. I can actually go on um, when you're on your boat with your radio and you want to transmit, I can actually come do a Zoom call and look at your rig or look at your radio and help you work with it if you're not familiar with the operation on the email. Oh, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you because so much. Because that makes all the difference to be successful is you get yes. a good radio check and figure out how this puppy works because the instruction manuals are terrible. Yes, they are. <laughs> and get on the air. Um, Perfect. And practice. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank I you hope. so much for your time.